It's been over eight hundred years since a Naga was consecrated in this way. here for a very unique possibility. You are part of the consecration, but not here just as a spectator. The intensity, the power, you see the mystical side of Sadhguru. This is not about looking up, this is about rising up. Let's make it happen. Namaskaram, Namaskaram all of you. We are here for a very unique possibility in this wonderful place. Are you cursing the rain? Yeah, it's good to be wet. <laughs> the idea of having all of you here is so that you are part of the consecration. You are not here just as a spectator. If that needs to happen, you must be participating the same level as me, the same level of involvement. Before I tell you the various aspects of what Naga is, I must tell you from what I've been looking up last few days, I see in nearly over eight hundred years, a proper consecration of Naga has not happened. The last one that happened was over eight hundred years ago. So you are pro part of a momentous event like this. What Naga means, why Naga, all those things, we'll look at it later because there are some immediate things that I must do before uh, time lapses. This is a rasa dhanda, that means it is a a mercury stick, it is loaded with full uh, solidified mercury. It is believed in uh, what we today refer to as modern science that unless you take mercury to minus thirty-two degrees centigrade, you cannot solidify it. That is not really solidification, that's more kind of freezing. But here mercury is solidified, it's at room temperature. This is the Indian alchemy. Solidified mercury can be energized in such a way, it can be of a tremendous aid to a human being. To break one's limitations, to go beyond what we refer to as the capabilities of our body and mind, to be able to do something that uh, is generally branded as superhuman, but this is all human. Naga Naga Nagendraya Naga Naga Nagendraya Naga Naga Nagendraya Naga Naga Nagendraya
So what we are doing with the dhanda is, uh, we have already worked upon this. It has been brought to a certain state of energy and receptivity. But uh, today, I, I know we have given you a diagram. So, from Muladhara, starting on the right side, comes to Manipuraka, from Manipuraka comes to Vishuddhi. What this means is, from Muladhara we are skipping the Swadhisthana and coming to Manipuraka and uh, skipping the Anahata and coming to Vishuddhi and going back the same way uh, on the left side. Naga is covered with uh, a layer of butter and over that turmeric paste is the first step. Next one, they will put kumkum, which is red in color as you know, which is a combination of turmeric and lime. After that, we will put asti, that is ashes from the cremation ground, which has been carefully collected and brought with a certain looking for a certain quality of that. In yoga, the word naga and the word kala are used synonymously. Both mean the same thing in a way. On the side, the two mas are putting the soil of the land upon these hundred and twelve kala serpas. And then they will put a sti on them. This will be part of the Kala Sarpa Seva that people can do. The cobra or the snake represents the aspect of time, what is behind here is the Kala Sarpa. What does Kala Sarpa mean? You have heard of certain snake being called Ananta. Hmm? Kerala people are here, Ananta Shayana is there. Ananta means eternal. So there is one snake which represents eternity. This is why the Kala Sarpa is in the form of infinite symbol or infinity symbol that is representing eternal, it is a Kala Sarpa. There is another snake which is called a Shesha Naga. So Shesha means when the creation collapses, when galaxies collapse, there will be some residue left. That is the Shesha. If you have learned mathematics in a local language in India, you would know Shesha means the residue in the mathematics. You learnt in English it's called the reminder, that is the Shesha. So this is the Shesha Naga, one who is left over from previous creations. So one who is left over is very vital for the next creation to happen, to have some kind of information which can go into the next making of the creation. These are two important aspects of Naga, one is Kala in that in the Kala, there is one which is Ananta, another 
which is Shesha. The third one is Kar Karkotaka, which is what these three aspects that we are handling here. We will go at that later. Right now, there's something else to do. All of you who have given yourself to this process of chant and tracing the form, in many ways you are a part of this danda. Now, one important aspect of consecration is to… Uh, this has taken a certain amount of time to prepare, so much of uh, energy work has happened and uh, <laughs> it's uh, reverberating wonderfully well. And uh, in many ways all of you are a part of this. Naga is sitting here. This Naga is a Kshetrapala, that means he is also the future protector of the Kshetra. When we say a Kshetra, we are building a whole system, a whole system which is both energetic and geographical, that it will become a spiritual possibility in its entirety. Uh, uh, your responsibility to see that uh, the bad press but Naga goes away because now already I see comments in social media saying this is uh, clearly satanic worship. We are from a knowing, we are from a, a deeper perception of life where there is no Saturn for us. Even a venomous creature, if handled properly, becomes a divine possibility. 
this is where we come from. It's been over eight hundred years since a Naga was consecrated in this way. So all of you being here, being a part of it, it's fantastic.